Hello and welcome to Commodore 128 Assembly Language Programming. Um, today we're going to continue on with the WORM program. And if, uh, if this is the first video of the series you've seen, you can find all the rest of them at, let's see, thought I had it on the page here somewhere, but um, at aaron.baher.biz, that's my website. Or you'll find them where you found this one. They should be nearby somewhere. So when we finished up last time, I said the next thing would probably be to um, work on the randomness because our program kept getting a five every time we ran it as, as the first random number it was picking. out of, A number out of one through eight, it kept getting five. And so I thought there was something wrong with the randomness. Um, I've since decided I don't think that's actually an issue. I think it's just because I was restarting the program each time. And because of that, it was resetting the, the SID chip that, that has the noise generator that makes the random numbers. And I think that's what was really going on, was it was kind of like resetting everything and starting from, from the beginning. And so um, I wrote a little program to test that and that's this randoms here um, I'm not going to go through the whole thing instruction by instruction um, but I'll just but it'll, it'll be in the code repository if you want to take a closer look at it but what it basically does is um, this is this is kind of the heart of it right here it grabs a random number out of the noise generator it ends it with 7, which clears the top 5 bits, leaving you with a number between 0 and 7. It puts that in X so that we can use X as, a, as an index to increment a memory location based on that number. So there's 8 memory locations at starting at Z, C00 going up to C07, corresponding to the 8 possible values we have. And so it just it just it's doing a count, basically. How many zeros have we gotten so far? How many 1s? How many 2s? And so on. Then it prints the number in hex, and then it prints it in binary, and then it prints the contents of the eight counters. And so that's what you're going to see on each line as, as it runs, is the number that it just got in both hex and binary, and then the eight counters, um, what their current counts are. And, um, and then these other routines are just for doing that. We've got a routine for printing it in hex which uses this little routine called print hex character and then there's a routine for printing it in binary um, and a routine to wait for a key which um, it doesn't use right now that that was while I was testing it so um, if I go ahead and run it just to just to show you what it does um, You can see here on the on the left, you've got the number in hex, which is is always one through or always zero through seven because of how we um, masked masked the top five bits. Then you see it in binary, and then you see the count so far in hexadecimal. So so far there have been C, which represents twelve. There have been twelve zeros, seven ones. Six twos, seven threes, eight fours, nine fives, seven sixes, and four. Um, well, I wasn't looking at the bottom line, but anyway, and four sevens. So you can see that you know they're not all exactly the same because that's not how randomness works. If you flip a coin ten times, you're probably not going to get five heads and five tails. You're probably going to get six and four, or seven and three, or something like that. Just the just the way the numbers work out. But the idea is, it is getting numbers from. 0 through 7 and it is getting a distribution you know a reasonably random distribution of them and um, I let this run for a long time and you know it, that's that's the way it continued um, you know sometimes you'll get more of one than another and then if you run it again you might get more of the other one so I think the randomness is going to be fine for the game and if it's not we'll come back to that later but um, I think it's going to be good for now so let's go back to our worm program and our notes. Um, I added a couple notes here that I thoughts that I had when we start making the body of the worm, which is going to come this time. Um, 
we want to make it a different character from the head I think um, so far we've just had the at sign moving around and I think we want to I think we want the head of the worm to be different to be a different character than the body um, and I think if we look at the manual here this is the set of ASCII codes um, that we have the set of character codes and I, and I think if we look right here there's uh, this um, filled in circle for 81 which is 51 in hex and then there's this empty circle which would be 57 in hex. So I think what I'm thinking is I'll use the filled in circle for the head of the worm and then a round empty circle for the body of the worm. We'll see how that looks. Um, so 51 and 57 in hex will be the two values. Um, so to pr be prepared for that, our head character then is going to be 51 and body character will be 57. Okay. Which means that in our collision detection, let's see, what did we did? Gotta stop and think. Yeah, right here we're comparing to head character. Well, the head character is never going to collide with its own self. What, we're, what we really want to check is against the body character. So that's one thing to, to fix right there. Um, okay, so just to check and make sure that that character works, at least the head character. Let's um, assemble. And we got a seven for thing this time. Okay, why is it not letting me move around? What am I doing wrong here? I guess it was stuck. Okay, it's still doing at signs. Why is it still doing at signs? There's head character. I bet I didn't use. Yeah, there's. I just used zero here instead of using head character. That's the problem. that that's the address but this was the character yeah I was just using the, the direct number itself instead of using the um, the alias up there and then this one looks like this would be the same way print head why do I have two places for that maybe I'm misreading one let's see place worm okay that's right we had to place the worm initially and then later on we have the loop where it prints it each time that's fine okay um, place a number that doesn't have anything or does that have anything to do with it no because all place a number cares about is whether there's a space there some extra room there someone said uh, someone left a comment this is like pair programming only more frustrating or, or something something like that uh, pair programming is where two people or uh, maybe more than two I don't know but program together I guess at the same time I've never tried it it sounds awful but um, <laughs> That probably is a little what this feels like if you're trying to if you're kind of following along and trying to do it at the same time. Um, okay, let's try.
try that again. Okay, there's our circle. I'm not sure why I jumped down there. I guess that was because... Yeah. And now the collision is checking for a body character and we don't have it doing the body character yet. And so that's, I suppose that should be our next step is to have when the head moves we want it to leave body characters behind all right so how do we do that well right here is where we print the head character but by this point we've already moved the head address location so that's that's too late so where do we print head from okay we print it right up in here So this is where, yeah, this is where we wait for the key press and, and do the thing. So the question is, we, we need to, basically we want to change the character at head adra before we change head adra to point to where we're moving to. So... I guess we can do that right up here after we get a key and before we start comparing it and, and changing head adra we can do that right here um, but we are going to have to save our key our key press because we have to, right here when we do these compares all these compares we're comparing the accumulator so if we're if we clobber the accumulator we have to make sure to save it so let's do a jump routine to print body print body character okay so this is going to be a little different than print head character um or let's just make it print body to be consistent let's see. we've got print head and print body so we'll be consistent keeping the same um So, yeah, we're going to have to use, we're going to have to do the same thing. We're going to have to store A because we need it back after we do this. That's what I was wondering. I was thinking, well, maybe we could use X, but we can't because we need to do this, this business here. We need to do the, um, no, maybe we can. Let's see. There is a there is index there is x indexed for y. Let's see. I don't know if it'll do that. Um, let's see here. I think I know the page numbers of all this stuff by now, but um, okay, you can stop scrolling this far enough up a little bit um, okay no store X has normal indexing but it doesn't have indirect indexing the only indirect indexing would be right here with store a so we do have to use a all right so this is print body Store A, print body character, and pull A back off the stack. So we push A on the, push A on the stack. We don't need to check for a collision because we're already doing that, and we're going to do that in print head. So we load A with body character, transfer A, or whoop, wait, that's not going to work before I was transferring A to Y here because I was loading A with zero but now that head character isn't zero that's not gonna work and that's why it jumped on that's why it jumped across the screen earlier 
come to think of it. So we need to load y with zero because we're just we're indexing here and we just don't we just want the index to say zero. So same thing here. Um, before I was doing a tay because I knew when when the when the head character was zero, I knew that it was zero and I could just put it in y faster that way than load y. Um, Okay, so we load A with the body character, load Y with zero, store A, index with zero, pull A back off the stack, and this is body character. Okay, so that should replace the character of at the position we're moving away from before we then move. Now that's going to be I think that's going to be fine as long as our only commands are movement commands or the quick command um, if we would put any other things in here if we put any other keys in here like if we stuck in a key to like say show the score or pause the game or something like that um, then this would be a problem because we only want it to print the body character before it moves the head character and so we'd have to Probably, well, probably what we do is we'd stick this jump to subroutine print body in each of these four sections rather than just have it up here in this one place. But for now, one place, I, it looks like it'll work fine. Um, so let's assemble. Load it. Okay, and let's see if it'll move around. I don't know how I don't know if you can see that on the screen. Um, it's working. <laughs> it's working, but the empty circle isn't as empty as I thought it was, as, as it appeared in the um, in the manual. Um, hmm. That might not be ideal. Um, I mean, it's not. It's just a cosmetic thing for now. But um, I think you want to be able to see what's actually going on. Uh, what other characters could we use? Um, surprise, there's not like a small circle. I mean, I guess we could make our own character that is, that is a thing you can do, which just isn't something I plan to do yet with this game, but, um, Yeah, we can use an asterisk. That's kind of a centered, circular thing. Four two, that'd be three two a, two a in hexadecimal. Let's try that. Let's make the body character two a. Oh, well, that's the way. Second, we can't use that. That's our edge character. Never mind that. Um, uh, maybe that would work, but I. I don't think it would be a good idea. Um, I shouldn't waste too much time on this. It's not. This is not a programming question. It's just a aesthetics question. Um, well, let's try capital O, I guess. Or just. Well, I got to have something out of the same set. Let's see. There we go. F. <clears throat> This monitor doesn't have <clears throat> read line capability apparently to where you can go back up to the previous line with one one keystroke, so I have to keep retyping the load command. Which is slightly annoying. Okay, well that's I, I, I still don't like that because now my body is bigger than the head, but at least you can see on the screen what's happening. And there we've got a collision. Okay. So our collision still works, but now it's now it's colliding against the body instead of just other head characters, and uh, and the replacement of the of the head character with body characters as we move works. <clears throat> All right, so still need a better pair here. Um, 
I don't think we'll dink with the colors today. We'll come back to that. <clears throat> so we've got a number out there in a free spot. So this, this is the next thing we need to figure out is how do we make the worm grow? Well, it's not even, I mean, right now it's growing, but how do we make it not grow more than it's supposed to? In other words, how do we make the tail of the worm go away? This is supposed to be, you know, if our worm is five characters long, it's supposed to, every time the head moves, the fifth character is supposed to disappear. So how do we do that? Um, I was thinking about a few different ways of doing it. Um, one way would be to have a list in memory somewhere of the memory locations of the worm, and then each time the worm moves, you drop the you, know, you drop the last one off the list. Um, I think that would be major overkill. Um, plus, when you think about it, if you play really well, you've got I don't know around 900 locations on the screen that you could that your worm could possibly fill in. And that's getting to be a long list of memory locations that you would be doing doing something with and, and trying to keep track of. So I, I don't think that's a solution. Um, when you think about it, as your worm moves along, the only things that change on each move are the head and the tail. If you think of the tail as the, the, the last character in the worm, you know, the head moves and one tail character goes away. So, you know, we have a head address to keep track of the head. I think we just need a tail address to keep track of the tail. And so let's add that. Let's see. Um, we're going to want it in zero page and I think tail address. We'll put it at eight zero. I'm fairly sure that is is unused stuff. We can check the. Um, let's see. We can check the memory map here just to be sure. Um, yeah, it has something to do with DOS. So as long as we're not loading um, files from disk. In fact. Um, yeah. It, um, let's see. In fact, let's um, I don't know. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of just crud here now. Like A zero is used for the for the clock, so you don't want to mess with that. Um, here we go. How about B zero? We got B zero and B one. Those have to do with tape. We're not we're not going to be using any cassette tapes, so let's use that. B0 and B1 will be our tail address. So B0 and B1 will be the address of the tail of the worm. Okay. So When we start out, the worm is one character long. Basically, there is there is no tail, but I think we're going to need to have one. Um, okay, we're also going to need to keep track of the length of the worm because we want to be able to. And we'll put that at B two because that's also tape tape business. Um, Length. Oops. Length of worm, because we want to be able at the end of the at the end of the game to say here's your score, because that's how that's what your score is based on in this game ultimately is how long your worm got. Um, so we want to keep track of that, and you know, come to think of it, that is going to need to be. Two character two that's gonna need to be a two byte number because um, because like I said your worm could get up to like nine hundred characters nine hundred nine hundred long and one byte will only hold two hundred fifty five so we're gonna have to um, have a sixteen bit counter there. Um, 
not a problem, just something just now came to mind. Um, okay, so we're tracking the head location, the tail location, and the length of the worm. Now we also need, if you think about, okay, what's going to happen when you run into a um, what's going to happen when you run into a number? Well, the worm is going to get longer, right? But and it's going to get longer by the amount of the number. That's the idea. If you run into a five, your worm gets five spaces longer. But it's not going to suddenly shoot out five longer. What's going to happen is the tail is going to stop disappearing for five moves, and that's how you know that's how your worm is going to get longer. Um, basically, your worm stops. You know, your worm is allowed to grow for the next five moves, and then it's five longer, and it's and your length will be five more. Um, So, okay, let's be writing down some notes here. So, on a move, we change the head to a body character, which we've already done. Um, Okay, if we collide with a number, then basically we want to put that number somewhere that we can count down until that number is sort of used up. Store the, the number in, we'll say, more tail, okay? In other words, we want to make the tail longer by that number. <clears throat> so let's add another Adra called more tail. And this will be at B4. Um, more tail character as well. Now this should be more body. That it's not it's not tail character. There's only one tail character. There's any number of body characters. So more body characters to add. All right. Back to the notes here, store nail in a number in more body. All right. And then we want to say if more body is equal to zero, then, oh boy, wait a second. Hmm. I just realized something. When ta when tail character drops off, how do we know what the well, you know, we might have to keep track of a, a list of body characters because if you if your worm is five long and you move to the left and your fifth body character drops away, disappears, how does the program know which one is the new tail character. Um, you could say it's the one closest to it, but that's only going to work until you're winding around yourself and then it's not going to work. Um, <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, I think we do have to have a list. Hmm, 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 hmm. kind of a stack, I guess you could say. Um, boy, this might this might take a little thinking more than I more than I thought. I thought I had that licked. Um, but yeah, somewhere if you if you think about well here, let's just start the game so I can talk about what I'm thinking here. Uh, If I start moving across the screen, somehow I've got to be tracking 
where the body characters are and I've got to be able to find the last body character and be able to get rid of it but then know which one is the next to last body character because it'll have to go away on the next turn and I can like I said I can't just go on which one is closest because what if I turn and come right back down the line of my worm and do you know wrap around like this well then you, you know you can't tell just by looking which one is the end of that worm that could have got it created a, a variety of different ways um, so yeah there is gonna have to be a list in memory of the characters of the body and we know their locations by their screen addresses which are two byte values so we're gonna have to have two bytes in a list somewhere for each character or for each location in the worm and <clears throat> And if you, you know, if you consider, well, there's up to, let's say, a thousand. It's not really a thousand because we have the border around the screen taken out of the, the total thousand. But if you say there's a thousand, then that means two thousand bytes potentially in the list um, to keep track of the locations of the worm in order. Hmm. Yeah. That's not a problem. It's just I hadn't really thought too much about it. Um, and there's going to have to be that's the thing there here's here's the kicker there's going to you're going to have to you're going to have to be able to keep adding on one end of the list and subtracting from the other end and then the question i mean you can't just keep moving your list say you're whichever direction you're adding on the one end and taking off the other end of your list you can't really just keep moving your list through memory because you're going to start running into other stuff you got to be able to say this is the section of memory that this is going to be in which means you could you could shift like if you take it you take the tail character off you could shift everything down two bytes in memory that seems kind of slow that seems like it would be kind of a slow thing to do if you've got say your worm is 500 characters long that's a thousand thousand bytes of pointers basically and if you want to move that thousand bytes every time you move your worm I don't know that might that might be an issue I don't know if that would be a problem or not um, hmm This is a little bit puzzling. I might have to think about this a little bit before I um, figure out the best way to do it. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of imagining that that's if you don't if you don't shift it to keep it in the same area of memory, you're going to have to like wrap around the memory somehow. Um, like if you say okay the the worm pointers are going to go from well since, since you need 2000 of them let's say you were going from 0 to 2000 and you just you start starting at 0 and you just keep adding the head pointers as you go up and then you get to th get to 2000 and you wrap around you would know that you would have room to wrap around because the head, the worm can only get so long it only has so many positions on the screen so you can't if if you if the head wraps around you know that the tail has moved up um, because some of the tail must have disappeared to make room for the for that much um, so you would need to be keeping you'd still need to you still have head adra and you still have tail address, but you'd have a pointer into this space called, let's say, head head P for head pointer, and you'd have a 
um, tail peeve or tail pointer pointing at wherever the tail is in this list in, in this list of pointers and you would know that the head or you would know that all the body pointers are between those two and if head is if head is greater than tail well then they're in between them in memory if head is less than tail then they wrap around um, but I guess the the key would be yeah okay that's that's okay that's gonna that would be okay the key would be when a tail when the tail character disappears you would always know that just move up two bytes you get to the next pointer to the next character in the worm body up from the tail that becomes your new tail yeah so I think that it's more com more complicated than I thought it was gonna be but I think that's gonna be okay um, It's it's an interesting problem, so I'm not I'm not sorry about it. But um, let's say okay, so we need basically two thousand characters. We don't need that much, but that's a, a rough two K. We'll just say that's eight pages eight pages of memory um, that we need to set aside for this purpose. Um, and so let's look at our memory map. I guess I don't want the detailed memory map. I just want the big. Which I don't know where they put that in this book. That's. That's CPM stuff. Which I think sometime I'm going to toy around with the Z80 processor. Um, I started, I started this series as 6502 stuff, and that's what it's primarily going to be. But there is kind of this the cool thing with the Commodore 128 that you have a Z80 built in there too. And you can't run both processors at the same time, but you can pass control back and forth. And the Z80 does have some interesting um, operations like load a section of memory with, with a character that you can do in one in one command. I thought... It might be fun to play with those just to see um, if you could do certain things faster by by it, it's it's tricky to do because you have to set up the code somewhere and set up some pointers and then pass um, control over to the other processor to the Z80 and already have the code in place that'll pass it back to the 8502. Um, so. It's 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 an interesting problem. I think it might be interesting enough to play with a little. Um, okay, so here's my here's what I'm looking at. I think. Yeah, if we don't. want to know where I have empty RAM. That's all I want to know. Let's, uh, for now. Looks like two, 2,000 is available. Yeah, so let's put it at 2,000. I think that's, I think that's empty space. Um, no, this one doesn't do that. Okay. Bank. Uh, yeah, still, still empty even when I switch to the ROM bank. Okay. Anyway, d depending on what you have switched in, like if you have the basic switched in or the kernel ROM or whatever, um, we're not using any of that, so we don't need to have any of it switched in anyway, but that's it affects what you're going to see when you look at different memory ranges. Um, well, here, let's just put a... Let's 
Um, list of pointers to worm body pieces. And that's going to go from 2000 to 23FF, which like I said, that's that's more, or wait a second, that's only four pages, to 27FF, that's eight pages, or 2K, that's more than enough space because we would run out of space to move the worm around before that happened. Um, let's check that, yeah, all right. Um, and so then we're going to need a tail pointer and a head pointer. And these are different from the head adra and tail adra that are actually pointing at screen memory. We'll use them when we're actually changing stuff on the screen. These are pointers into this list of pointers. Um, pointers to pointers here basically, which is uh, which is going to get a little confusing possibly, but um, I think it'll make sense as we do it. Um, Let's see, we've got to go back to our, oh, sorry, 5.11, there's a memory map. That B0, I just want to make sure I'm not getting into, yeah, that's still all tape buffer stuff in the B0 range. So, <clears throat> Looks like it continues to be cassette buffer stuff into the C's also. So. Um, yeah. So we can put our head pointer at B6. We're not actually using B5, but I'm just going to keep them on even numbers. Pointer to the head location pointer. <laughs> so, like I said, it's a pointer to a pointer. Um, I think that's e actually easier to understand in assembly than it is in something like C because in assembly you're actually you can actually see the addresses and you can say okay we're going to put a list of addresses starting at 2000 and going up and now these are going to be pointers to locations in that list of pointers so pointer to a pointer you know um, it may not be the easiest thing to to get your mind around but um, I think it's more straightforward in assembly because you see what it's actually doing to the tail location pointer. Um, that's going to be interesting actually using these, um, but we'll see. We will see how that goes. Um, yeah, and it may make like head. It may make head adra superfluous, but we'll see. Um, Okay. <laughs> Gotta think. Think, think, think. Um, so, at the beginning, when the game starts, yeah, like I said, to get, getting your mind around pointers to pointers is never super easy, so... Um, we will we will take as much time as it as it takes to get it right. Um, so at the beginning of the game here, we place the the worm, and I'm going to call this place head because that's really what we're placing. We're just placing the head. That'll be more clear. And to do that, we're storing the head address in the you know we're storing where we want to start the the head of the worm, we're putting that in head adra and then we're using that to store the head character in that screen location. So at the same time, we're going to want to put that address that we just put in head adra, we're going to want to put it in our in our list of um, addresses at 2000. And we're going to want to put it where the head pointer is pointing. 
So before we do that, we've got to set up the head pointer to point to, yeah. We need to set up the head pointer and tail pointer to point to the proper location in that list of pointers, which should just be 2000. Um, so let's do that up here in the start. Load A with, um, well, let's load, let's do the low byte first. Store that into head pointer. And also store it into tail pointer. And then load A with the high byte. Store that into head P plus one. And store it in P plus one because if you think about it when we start our worm only has one body part and so the head and the tail are the same thing they're going to be pointing to the same location um, yeah this is going to be it's going to be interesting at the very beginning because when we move the head It's going to leave it, well, yeah, yeah. When you move the head, it turns the previous location into a body character, but then the code will kick in that we haven't written yet that will check and, and remove the tail character, and so then it'll remove that because it, that's just the way the math will work out. So, so that's okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so when we place the head then, so we've set up our pointers now to say, okay, head P and tail P both point to the first location in our pointer list. So now we need to store head adra into that location that's being pointed at by head P. This is where you have. This is where you have to stop and think. Uh, what exactly? Um, yeah, that's going to be okay. Um, yeah. So when we store head address, we will also store that into head P. And then, now wait a second, I got, uh, gonna hurt my brain. Um, no, when we don't want to store it in head P. We want to store it where head P is pointing to. Yeah, because head P is a pointer into a list of pointers. We want to put this pointer in that pointer list. Starting to sound like a Dr. Seuss book. Um, yeah, that makes sense, believe it or not. Um, we want to store it. We'll have to move our load Y to zero up here so that we're ready. We want to store it into head P, comma Y. And then we come here. We want to store the high byte of that into head P comma Y, but we want to move up one space, and so before that we have to increment Y. And then here we'll decrement Y so that it's back to zero to do this. I think that makes sense. Um, we're going to try it here in a bit to make sure, but I think that makes sense. And then we may end up refactoring this whole business here because, well, or maybe the, maybe we can just do a jump subroutine that'll go that will call four times depending on which you know for all these four movements. But basically, when we do, well, maybe not. Maybe we won't even have to do that. Well, let's um, let's test that much.
okay we've we've placed our head and let's check out what things are what things say um, head address should point to 600 that's where we started that's where we've been starting the head of the worm so let's check that uh, what is I already forgot F A B A 7 C why is that why is that completely different from what I expected um, A is head address and we set that to 600 right here I wonder if it's because I changed the bank let's see there it is okay yeah I'm not sure what I what I had mapped in there um, okay so head address got set to 600 now we should also find that at 2000, 2001. Yes. Okay. So it worked. <laughs> this business right here worked. We stored, we, we have our head P pointer, which we started out at 2000. And then we used it to store the location of the, of the first head character where head P is pointing to. And so it's the first thing in that in that list. All right. So the next thing is going to be every time we move, we want to append the we want to append the um, yeah we want to append the new location of the head to that list. So we should be able to do that in print head I believe because we have head address right here which has already been calculated for us yeah that's gonna work okay um, so the first thing we need to do is move head P up two spots think yeah because head P is still pointing to where the head was well head P is still pointing to the pointer to where the head was so we need to move it up two spots in our pointer list to the next free spot so we need to increment head P and then branch if carry clear ahead and then increment head P plus one and then our next and then there's where we branch to so this is and then we need to do that again okay so we we're incrementing head P and then we're looking to see if head P is wrapped around to zero and if it did or no sorry it's not branch of carry clear branch if not equal there's no carry on an increment um we found that out last time so we incre we increment head P then we check to see if it rolled around and became zero if it didn't then we're you know then we skip ahead we increment it again and and check again so even though technically I wouldn't need to check both times because we're talking about an even number of two, you know, we're talking about two byte pointers here. Um, and so it's, it's always going to be an even number. It shouldn't, it shouldn't hit on it. It should always wrap after the second one, not after the first one. Um, but just to be safe, I think, Basically, you would all you'd be saving if you take it out would be this one branch if not equal. Um, <clears throat> but I guess we should because that's I say it's it's completely superfluous. 
Um, okay, so we've moved the head pointer up two bytes now, and we've made sure that if it wraps around, it wrapped around to the beginning. Um, no, wait a second. No, we didn't. We haven't done that part yet. We just made sure that if it wrapped to a next page, it wrapped around to the beginning. But if the next page is 2.8, then we need to go back to 2.0. Okay. So right here, we can load A from head P. Now let's see. I only need to do this if it incremented. So we can move this plus down. This will come just this will happen just if it incremented here. So load A with head P plus one compare to to eight. Because our our space, our pointer list is gonna run from two thousand up to twenty seven FF. So if that rolls over to two eight, then we're gonna roll back to the beginning at two thousand again. Branch if not equal, a head. And if it but if it was equal, then we're gonna load A with two zero, store that into head P plus one. Okay, and then we need to change this pluses. Um or maybe we don't. Maybe the plus can be the same plus. Because if it didn't increment, if it didn't wrap around, we just go right ahead to here. If it did wrap around and they needed to come back, yeah. So at this point we've we've got the we've got it ready. So now we've moved the pointer up. That's all we did right there was move the pointer up. Um, Let's, uh, let's actually put in a comment. Move head P up two bytes. Wrap around if necessary. Okay. Now that we've done that, we can store head addra where head P points. So we've got our head adder pointer, we're going to put it in the list of pointers where head, head P points to. So um, yeah, okay, so we want to load Y, or is Y still zero at this point? I guess y is still zero, so we can load a from head addra or no, I don't know. We don't want to load a from where it points to. We just want to load a with head addra. Stop doing that, and then store that where head p points, comma y. And then we increment y to point to the next spot. Load a from head addra plus one. Store a into head p, comma y. Now that y is one, we've moved. We're, we're storing this one byte higher, and I think that will do it. Um, okay. Is, like I said, so it's a little mind bending or stretching or something. All right, so we go to we start it. Now let's check our pointers. This is pointing to 600, which is where our head pointer or our head address is. And that's pointing to 600 also. 
Now if we go to the game, and we'll, we'll move one to the right. Okay, so we should go up to 601. Now, yeah, there's our head adder pointing at 601. Now let's look at our pointer list. <clears throat> that did not work. Something didn't work. Um, let's see where head P is currently. Head P is at B6. It's possible that I used a memory location in zero page that's getting messed up. Um, B6. No, that's pointing to 2, 0. But it didn't get incremented. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm getting my levels of pointery mixed up. Too, either too many levels of pointerness or not enough levels of pointerness. Um, right here. We increment head P. So why didn't that why didn't that happen? That's the question. Why didn't head P get incremented? If it's B six, I think that's what it is. I keep forgetting. It'd be nice to have a better memory. Uh, B six is head P. Yes. So we incremented head P. Wait a second, what did I... Uh, no, don't increment head P plus one. What the hell am I thinking there? We just want to increment... Yeah, okay. We want to increment head P twice. We want to move it up two bytes. Then if it rolled around, which it could do if it, if it was going from FE to zero, zero, then we want to increment head P plus 1, which is the high byte. Compare that to 28, and then roll it around, all the way around, to 0 if it needs if needs be. And store that into head P plus 1. Okay. Let's try that again. Okay, check B67, that's pointed at 2000. Check a section at 2000, that's good. Now we go back to the game, move one to the right, and then check those things again. Okay, that looks that's right. Now if we look at head P, I'm not sure what I did last time. I'd, okay, it's moved up. It's moved the the head P pointer is now pointing at 2002. You have to remember these are always little Indian. The the low byte always comes first. So head P is now pointing to or holding 2002 as a pointer into our list of pointers that starts at 2000. And at 2002 is 601, which is the new location of the head that I just moved to. If we go back to the game again, move, let's say, down. Okay, That should add 40 to the head location. Um, so now it should be 629 in hexadecimal. So let's see what we see. The head pointer should have moved up, head P should have moved up. Right, two more spots, so it's up to 2004 now. And if we check that area, yeah, there's our 629. So now we have, if you you know, this list of this list of pointers now is pointers to the three locations that our that our worm has so far crossed. So we started out at six six zero zero, we moved right one to six oh one, and then we moved right we moved down to six two nine. So if I keep moving around the screen, 
it'll keep it'll keep adding on to this list of pointers okay. so that's the top end of the pointer list then we'll have to deal with the bottom end of the pointer list keeping track of where the tail is and dropping well I, we don't even have to drop them out of memory but moving the tail pointer along and dropping the tail the dropping the tail off of screen when it when the time is right um, you know, I, th I think this is a fairly elegant solution to this is to my mind anyway um, the this wraparound idea that we're just going to keep moving the we're going to keep moving the worm sort of through this chunk of memory from 2000 to 27 FF sort of the same way we're moving it through screen memory um, it's just that we have to have we have to be able to keep track of where you know where is the tail pointing to and then where is the next tail piece of the worm pointing to and the next piece to that and the next piece to that and so that's what our pointer list here is going to do for us okay so that took a while um, the next time we're going to work on the tail end of it we'll work on getting the tail to we'll work on tail P because now we've got head P tracking through this space of pointers we're gonna have to work on tail P tracking through this space the same way and and then also how tail P needs to slow down or how tail P needs to stop sometimes when you've run into a number to let the worm get longer and also how the tail pieces will fall off when they you know when when they should expire and become space again as the worm moves away from them so that will be the task for next time um, but I'm over an hour here so that's where I'm gonna quit this time and uh, actually let me make a note or two next time um, move tail P through the pointer list space um, and expand worm length on hitting numbers and make the tail go away when it should. Those will be our, hopefully we can do all that um, next time. And if we can do that, we'll be pretty close to done and then it'll just be a matter of um, Let's see. Quitting, basically. Well, we need to be able to, to either quit or when the game ends, when it ends one way or another from a quit or a collision, um, we, need to, we need to print out this, the score. Um, that shouldn't be too big a deal. We can borrow our, borrow our print number routine that we wrote several videos ago and uh, just plug that in and, and uh, have that to use. So that's the plan for next time. Hope this was interesting, and I'll thank you for watching.